Don't you hate it when an app or a website has too many intrusive ads? I mean, one or two is fine, but when it's constantly appearing every time you die in a game or when you just open up a website, it's a bit annoying. Well, with Personal DNS Filter, I can instantly get rid of every ad within a website or app. It also blocks malware, tracking, and other nasty content that you don't want. The best part is that it's completely free and it just uses a DNS filter proxy to accomplish this. And we're back to back with a set of 15 Android apps you're sure to install. This time I wanted to focus on underrated apps. Applications that don't have too many downloads but deserve a lot more and are practical. I'll make a deal with you guys. If you don't end up installing at least one app, drop a dislike. But if you install at least one or more, you have to leave a thumbs up. Deal? Okay, sweet. Also, only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking what you see, consider subscribing. It's completely free and you can always change your mind later. If you've ever gotten tired of responding to the same messages over and over, like someone asking for your address or your older relatives always asking for help on a technical question, I recommend checking out Autoresponder to automatically reply to certain messages. It works for most of the popular messengers, including WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, and Signal. You just need to make sure to install the appropriate app. With an autoresponder, you can then create a new rule that lets you write out the received message that you like to automatically respond with. And then you can write out the automatic response and apply any additional rules, such as only auto replying to certain contacts, whitelisting anyone from the auto replies, or if you get the pro version, you can take it a step further, like choosing specific times to auto reply, responding while you're driving, adding a delay so that you don't reply immediately, and a lot more. It works like a charm and doesn't require root or ADB access. The only thing that can be out of reach for some people is the $20 price tag for the pro version. But luckily for you, I'll be giving away a total of 100 promo codes, 20 from each autoresponder app, on both my Instagram and Twitter, at HowToMen, in a few days. So make sure to follow me there so you don't miss out. Switching back and forth between launchers is such a hassle, especially if you're trying to open your stock launcher since there most likely isn't an icon within the app drawer that you can press. That's why I like to use Launcher's Quick Tile to let me bring up the default launcher dialog to switch launchers much more quickly. And it's all done through a simple quick settings tile. On top of that, it's free and very underrated with only a thousand downloads. Moving on, our smartphones nowadays are so powerful that they can even become full-fledged video editors. And being a power user myself, I sometimes forget that I can edit my 4K footage on the go. CapCut, the sponsor of this video, is one of the best options out there, and it's even been developed by the same people who created TikTok. So what do you get with this video editor? Well, for starters, CapCut will automatically edit your videos for you with templates, or you can have a regular desktop video editor to get more control. You get a timeline that supports multiple layers so that I can stack videos on top of each other, merge different assets, and reorder videos. I can also apply different animated effects such as making any video look retro, adding some flames, or even include trendy effects like glowing lines, shock waves, etc. On top of that, you get all the basic editor functions such as adding text with customizable fonts, throwing in stickers, filters, color grading to enrich your content, applying a chroma key to any green screen, and more. I could go on and on, but I think you guys can already tell how feature packed this video editor is. Audio is also highly customizable. They have a built-in audio library with tons of songs to choose from, or you can include your own background music from your phone storage. You can also overvoice any footage, extract music from downloaded videos, and there's auto caption to make your videos easier to follow if your microphone isn't that great. That's just the tip of the iceberg. I've been using CapCut for a while, and it's honestly a must have to quickly and easily edit videos I recorded on my device while I'm not next to my desktop. If you're also interested in editing on the go for free, make sure to download CapCut through the link in the description. The next underrated app comes in handy for those who want to share screenshots in style. It's called HiShoot 2i, and it lets you easily place screenshots into smartphone frames. Pretty neat. All the templates are found within a Telegram channel called HiShoot Templates, and being that there are hundreds to choose from, there's no doubt in my mind that you wouldn't be able to find one that you like. After you do find one, download and install the APK that's right below the picture. Then head on over to the High Shoot 2i app and tap on the gallery icon. Change, and you should see the template you downloaded within this page. Tap it and go back. And to add a screenshot, you just tap on the plus icon, first screenshot, and then find a screenshot you'd like to use. Finally, you can remove the badge by going to the B section. Once you're done, you can save the image and find it within your Photos app to share it. A pretty spectacular app that even follows the new Material U theme 
It's not on the Play Store though, but I'll leave a link down below so that you can download it. Recently, Android 12 removed the Smart Hub within the Power Menu, and many people don't like that. Well, if you have Root, not only can you bring it back, but you can also customize it with an app called Classic Power Menu. There are a couple of things you can do within this app. You can customize the power buttons, including adding new ones to reboot into the bootloader or recovery. You can also remove buttons or rearrange them. For your cards, you can also allow them to be accessed for payment, even when your phone is locked. That way you can just pay faster at the cash register. The same goes for controlling your smart devices. And if you have loyalty cards, you can bring up a preview within the power menu to be scanned without even opening Google Pay or having the phone be unlocked. The only compromise for now is that you need to have the older Google Pay app for this to work, the loyalty cards. I'll leave a link down below to the older version. Finally, the best part is that it supports Material U theming, so all the elements within the Smart Hub follow the color palette of my wallpaper if I'm running Android 12. Unfortunately, it's not on the Play Store, but it is on GitHub. Moving on, if you ever want to use your videos as your wallpaper, the best way to do so is with Video to Wallpaper. You just have to tap on the plus button within the app, choose your video, hit OK, and then apply. It'll have you set the app as the live wallpaper, and that's it. It doesn't matter if the video is in 4K, extremely long, or in landscape, the app will crop it appropriately and set it as your background. I even love that you can have multiple videos saved as presets to switch between them whenever. It's pretty easy to use and has no ads or in-app purchases. This next step can come in handy if you tend to post a lot on social media. It's called Teb, and it lets you post on multiple social media accounts simultaneously. For example, if I like to post a picture, text, or both on say my Twitter and Facebook simultaneously, I can do that. I can also have it posted on my Instagram, but you need to have a business account connected to your Facebook and Telegram, but it requires a bot to work. On top of that, I can also post on multiple profiles simultaneously, and for security reasons, all tokens and sensitive data are stored locally on your device. Now, even though the interface isn't that great, for the most part, it does what it says. One feature that I really like about the iPhone is that within the settings, it'll let you know the health of your battery so that you can get a better idea of when it's time to change it. Now, even though most Androids don't have this feature, there is an app out there called Electron that does tell you the wear state of your battery. It also lets you know the current milliamp hour battery level, which is a lot more accurate than a battery percentage, your battery's temperature, the rate at which your battery is discharging and charging, and a lot more. So if you have an old phone and your battery is draining faster than usual, I recommend you check out Electron to see if it's time to get a new battery. This next app isn't really underrated, but their newest update is, especially since it's not on the Play Store yet. I'm talking about Launcher 12's new alpha build, and I know I just reviewed it a few days ago, but believe it or not, four days after the video went up, Launcher developers dropped an update that came with a massive new feature, themed icons. Yep, the same themed icons that match the colors of the wallpaper on the Google Pixels running Android 12. Sure, it doesn't work on every application, just some Google ones, but they work just like the ones found within the official Pixel Launcher. Of course, Launcher 12 brings a ton more new features, including Material U redesigns, but if you'd like to learn more about this update, click the eye in the top right corner. This next app only works for OnePlus devices, or if you own a Galaxy S20 series, that works too, but if you don't, just skip to the next app. I think we can all agree that high refresh rates like 90 or 120 hertz are a great thing to have in a smartphone. The only problem is, is that most OEMs like OnePlus or Samsung limit the apps that can use those higher refresh rates. So for example, apps like Google Maps, Bromite, or even some games just get stuck with just 60 hertz. Well, I found a solution. An app called AutoHertz allows you to choose the apps that can use the higher refresh rate and which ones can't. It doesn't even require root. All you need to do is launch an ADB command, which the app can guide you through the process, and afterward from a list, you can just flip a switch to enable 90 or 120 hertz for those apps that seemed laggy before. Back in the day, one of the biggest reasons why I would root my device was to be able to control my music with the volume keys even when the screen was locked. Well, an app called Next Track lets you do just that. So when I'm listening to music, I can simply tap on the volume down button when the screen is off and skip to the next track. Or I can modify it to pause the music, mute it, or go to the previous track. Surprisingly, it's pretty much the only app on the Play Store that does this properly. The only downside is that if you like to customize the volume up key or change it to a double press, you need to get the Pro version for $4.99. Still, if you think this will save you from constantly needing to unlock your phone just to change a song, I think it's worth it. If you're a free Spotify user, you're going to love me after showing you this app. 
It's called Mutify, and whenever an annoying Spotify ad interrupts your music, Mutify will automatically silence your phone's volume even when your screen is locked or the app is in the background. It'll save you from a few heart attacks when you're going from a calm song to a screaming advertisement. It's even completely free to download. Have you ever needed to find a midway point between you and a long distance friend or girlfriend but weren't sure where to meet up? Well, Halfway can do it for you. Just put in your location and the other person's location and it'll find the closest place to your halfway point. The best part is that you can even specify what type of place you'd like to meet up at, whether it be a restaurant, shopping mall, grocery store, etc. You name it, Halfway will find it, something in between the both of you. It's also completely free to download with no ads or in-app purchases, thumbs up for that. If you have an old phone that came with water resistance, I would double check to see if its water seal is still intact, because you don't want to be jumping in the pool or taking a shower and your phone instantly stops working. This is because the seal that stops water from getting into your phone can eventually break over time. So to test if it's broken, download an app called Water Resistance Tester. You just use two fingers to press down on the screen and you'll either get a check mark, which means your seal is intact, or a red exclamation point, meaning keep this phone away from water. How the app can tell this is by using your phone's built-in barometer. Finally, Media Bar is an extremely underrated app since it just got released. It can put a bar right below the status bar to help you keep track of your music or video progress. Plus, you can even scrub through the audio without needing to pull down the notification shade. Now that's a game changer. As if that wasn't enough, you can also control your music or video by tapping the status bar to skip to the next track or video, play your pause music, and a lot more. It's a must have. Anyways, did you end up installing at least one app? You know what that means, drop a like. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at HowToMen so you can get a chance at winning those promo codes. Thank you so much for tuning in once again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!